Jupe Vesterbro, Westbridge Christmas, episode 8, En God Handel. Uh, I, I guess a good deal, something like that. And another episode I love, spoilers for these first 8 episodes. And yeah, so we... Yeah. Um, Anne moved the television away. You know, because he, yeah, he wants people to talk to each other. And, yeah, Stuart's moving it back and says, without television sets, people die of boredom. And, you know, yeah, Anna makes the very, <laughs> yeah, the, the, you know, the very logical point, the logical counterpoint to that. What do you think people did before they had televisions? And Stuart says, I guess, I mean, they must have died of boredom. They're not here anymore. <laughs> yeah. I, f I feel like if, if this show was made today, instead of television, it would probably be on a, like, collecting people's phones and devices, you know, so they would, so they would talk, you know, and, and, yeah, Stuart would be like, you know, without devices, you die of boredom. And I, um, <clears throat> I try not to get too personal in in my videos anymore. But I don't think that you should joke about something like that because I actually had an uncle who died of boredom when someone took his devices. I almost got through it without breaking a, without cracking a smile. Anyway, and then yeah, the the TV is that a is that a bad joke to have in a video series where I do talk about serious subjects? I probably I just couldn't help it. Um, yeah, and the the news talks about the um, the aftermath of the not not the record company, but yeah, you know. Danny gave, or Anna gave, you know, C4 to children, thinking it was clay, and now the, oh god, I'm going to hell for laughing at, but I do find it very funny. And then, you know, they talk about Anna's clothes, you know, being recycled, and again, thankfully, it doesn't go on forever, like, in some of the shows, where actually, in at least one of the shows, he did actually, actually, I don't know the thing about, did he talk about it in more than one show? Anyway, in at least one show, he talked about this, and he did actually do Honest Voice, and think about that, I think that was before he came, a bit before Honest was introduced to the world, at least. So, I guess, just, yeah, he had that voice very ready for exactly this kind of character. But, yeah, um... For some reason, he has a problem with recycled clothes. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. I have recycled clothing. You know, that, yeah, that works both ways. I own some clothes that I got from recycling, and some of my old clothes I gave to recycling. There's nothing wrong with it. He even, like, in the live show, he even said, oh, you know, people will tell you it's freshly washed. And then he acts like that's, not enough like that shouldn't matter like I mean there's there's stuff that I I don't think you know you can you can recycle I, I I'm not sure I've ever heard of anyone successfully recycling a prophylactic but clothes it's fine yeah you know you, you wash it it's anyway um, let's see uh, yeah, another thing, you probably can't recycle uh, a diaper. Uh, I, I, do, I don't know for sure. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contact Matt Walsh. He seems to know more about diapers than he probably should. A little too comfortable around grown men wearing diapers. It's not often that you see a half-naked guy with a swastika and the swastika is not necessarily... the swastika is 
not the only deeply disturbing thing that you see. That's going to be complete nonsense to people who don't know what I'm talking about, but yeah, if you Google Matt Walsh diaper, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then you'll want to clear your browsing history. And yeah, so Anna suggests, you know, look, who wants to sing? And Danny, you know, oh, you know, I want to sing. It's uh, not you. And why'd you ask? Why didn't you wait until he had left the room before asking? You know, now it's going to be on his mind all day. Anyway, and yeah, he, you know, he says, what if, what if it's something short? I know a short one, the world's longest rap, which, beautiful reference, because this is one of the, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of pop culture references on this show. This is one of the rare ones where actually, you know, that song was recorded by a group whose name translates into English as East Coast Hustlers. East Coast Hustlers. And the, the, one of the, let's see, yeah, um, the, um, the DJ for them, Nikolai Pike, helped write the show and worked on the, the music along with Bo Rasmussen, Bossy Bo, one of the two, of the, of the duo, East Coast Hustlers. So, yeah, that's a that's a fun little nod to, and they actually like. Um, I'm not sure about Nikolai Pike, but Bo Rasmussen also helped with the radio show, so they've known each other for years at the, by this point. And apparently, I don't know if it was a joke, but apparently at one point, East Coast Hustlers. Ah, uh, hold on, right, right. At one point, Anna's Madison performed stand up as a warm-up act for East Coast Hustlers playing live. So that's also very cool. And it's the kind of thing that, you know, if you don't see it in the end credits and you don't watch the behind the scenes, which I'll be honest, that's the only reason I know I didn't notice it in the end credits, you're not going to know that, yeah, it's an actual reference to the, the yeah, that the reference is to someone working on the the show and yeah it's it's because it's one of those things you know the the uh, pike and rasmussen do not appear on camera in this so you know maybe this is a way to you know help make people aware you know they they helped work on it and they did fantastic work so yeah um Let's see. Right, and and yeah. So Anna tries to stop him, say, you know, that's way too long and and right, that's another thing. Um the the world's longest rap, let's see. There we go. Is uh hold on, it's got to be here somewhere. Um Really? Oh, here we go. Yeah. About 80 minutes. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty ridiculous kind of, you know, the entire album is one long story. And, you know, there's a bunch of, um, what's it called? A bunch of, of guest rappers along the way. And, yeah, it's, it's, It's a very fun, you know, if you haven't listened to it and you like Danish rap from back then, I I haven't heard that much recent Danish rap. What I've heard is a lot better. I, I do love rap from, you know, the, the late 90s and early 2000s, including Danish rap, but, you know, uh, Tessa, Tessa, the, the Danish rapper, you know, who's, who's currently active, much much more talented in my opinion um yeah so if, and then we have the uh, but but yeah for some reason 
when people think of the world's longest rap, the first thing that pops into their mind is the line that Danny sings. Like, um, of a fellow Danish rap group. Let's see. So in Danish, they're called Humlerne. I guess the Knights of Oat, something like that. Um, yeah. Um, they did a, a parody of. Uh, yeah, and they called it the world's shortest rap. And the one line that they did in that was, Ranas, we had not Ranas, we had arrived, you know. So, so yeah, I, I don't know why, but for some reason, that's the one that people really, like, it's not the first line, it's a, it's a little bit into the song. Like, the song is about them... Or the, the album is about them, like, trying to find, uh, um, <clears throat> what's the word, um, the, uh, yeah, they're, they're trying to score some, some money, and, uh, you know, along the way, they go to Jutland, Yulen, and, yeah, for some reason, you know, the line where they arrive in a specific place in Jutland, which was where they were going, that's the one that that everyone you know just remembers and yeah. Um, and let's see, yeah, we have a great Joe uh, Stewart points out. You know, you say a couple that can mean you know two. It can mean multiple. And yeah, he goes into the the garage, and Eagle wants two million. And, yeah, you know, when, when Kefia shows up a little later, he's like, you weren't supposed to tell him that, you know, this, and, and it is like, like, dude, just say that you're waiting for Kefia, just, you don't have to actually say, so it's just, yeah, at least he's, you know, he sticks to the story of, you know, oh, two million, that's for spare parts. And, yeah, um... Stewart says, two million, that's like two or three years of Fanid Blanca. Did I say Blanca in the others? Wow. Obviously, it's Blanca. Blanca is French for, like, white, I want to say. You know, like, blank. Um, let's see. You know, this. If, if, my, if my old French teacher heard me, mispronounce such a common French word like just he he would be so furious but despite that I did not do it on purpose and then we have the oh right there's the, the joke about uh, a prostitute renegotiating which is more misogyny and I, I you know okay here, you know, have have this suitcase. Oh wow, you you got him with a piece of luggage. You are a very good, you know, deal maker. And it's like he doesn't. It doesn't occur to Stewart. There's two million in that thing. You know, it's not see through. It's full of bills, obviously. <laughs> and ego thinks, oh wow, that is that is legitimately funny. I. Okay, fair enough. You got me. That's, you know, and he's keen to keen on celebrating yet again. Brings out yet another bottle of vodka. See, my head cannon is he just carry. He this is just the third that he had on him already. He doesn't go home and and put a new one in. And we have another bit with Stuart being very greedy and drinking way more. And, you know, Ego is staying there with, like, the, the little glass. And, and Stuart pours just a tiny little bit in, and then goes back to drinking himself. Wow. And some great jokes with Danny as the, the Santa. And, again, I, I forgive the, the kids for smiling so much well be you know yeah they were they were fans of his because of the radio show so yeah they're they're really excited to to yeah 
I'm not saying I would have, like, won, but if I had had the age for it, I would definitely have auditioned for one of these roles, but I was a little bit too old to be... Because they're all, like, children. I was a teenager at the time, but... I, I, yeah. At the time, I would have given my left arm to be... Ah, shit. Is that ableist? I didn't mean to be ableist. Um, to, to be that close to, to Honest Madison and, and to get to perform comedy with him. But, but yeah, you know, so... Ah, I might not remember all of them, but, like, one of them is, like, you know... I want a Pokemon. I, I have this is a Pokemon. I have one. I want another one. And and Danny's like, hmm. 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 well, good luck with that. And the kid's like, my Pokemon. You took my Pokemon. <laughs> He's so used to stealing. He can't even not steal. At work, like he already got kicked out of this place for stealing once. And he steals from a kid, you know, they, they say that stealing from a baby is easy, but Danny likes a little bit of a challenge, you know. And, you know, the you know, the kid's like, but now I don't have any Pokemon, and then Danny's like, well, maybe you should wish for one. <laughs> Just, yeah. Um, let's see. <sighs> yeah, we have the, the really gross joke where he tells a child... You know, he makes a, a sexual reference, which, yeah, I, I get it. I get that part of the joke is Danny doesn't realize how inappropriate that is. Still not really a fan. And that's probably a joke that might not have made it to screen if the show was being made today where we're a little bit more careful with jokes like that. Um... And then the, uh, yeah, the third one, and, and that's especially, like, this kid, like, all smiles, like, his, he, half of his face is taken up by this massive grin on his face, and no wonder he gets to pretend to, to, to you know, nut shot on us Madison, which I'm sure at the time he didn't understand the, the, like, he just thought, oh, that's because it, like, hurts, you know. And, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, I, I haven't heard all of them. I've only heard the, the ones that he put out on the, on the CD. But, uh, you know, certainly of them, a lot of the jokes that he did on the radio show were about people getting hurt. Which, yeah, you know, that's, there, there's comedy to be mined there if you, if you do it right. But, but yeah, you know, he, he sits on him and then he, like, jumps on him, and it's also one of these, that, like, some of the jokes on the show, not all, but some, it's, yeah, it probably does happen, you know, that's the kind of thing, it's, you know, yeah, it's, the, the kid might not even do it on purpose, you know, but every so often, a mall Santa probably has someone, you know, and the joke here is, Danny is such a terrible person, He's he has so little empathy for children, that he punches the kid for it. And they do this very smart thing of, you know, the kid's got his back to the camera, so all he, Honest Madison has to do is, like, the movement, and, you know, they, they I think they added a sound on the, you know, and the acting helps sell it. And it's possible that the kid wasn't even, like, making the crying noise as they filmed that, because we don't see his face, so I can imagine they, they added that, which is also, you know, that's a that's a good way to, to take care of that. But, but yeah, that's, that's so messed up, and I am a terrible person for laughing at it, but I just can't help it. Um, let's see, yeah, and the, the song is very catchy, and there are some really great jokes, the, the bit about, you know, KGB, which, like, that is the kind of thing that they might have, they, you know, some of the what the KGB did was ridiculously petty. Like, so, so for jeans and videotapes, he got sent to the gulag. Like, it's just ridiculous. But, yeah, they were just completely, yeah. But, you know, sadly, there's a lot of misogyny in, in the song. You know, the the first woman he was married to would only have sex for, for money, 
so it didn't work out because he didn't have money. The second one, you know, it's like the joke is basically, oh, she was like a mail order bride, you know, which I do think, you know, I appreciate that that can help some people, but it's, there, there's a, an incredible power imbalance there, you know, so it's, it's, it's a pretty messed up practice. And the song doesn't really sound like it has a lot of, of empathy for the, the, yeah, people who are sold like that. Uh, let's see, then we have the, well, not sold, but you know what I mean. Yeah, then we have the, the KGB one, which, like, it's, it's funny, but it does also play on this misogynistic trope where a lot of misogynists think that women are unusually deceptive. And, you know, it's not that no woman has ever been deceptive, but if you are not allowed to work, and once you're not conventionally attractive, you might just not have someone else take care of you. Yeah, deception, you know, might be the only way you can ensure that you have a, a good life. Let's see. I do appreciate the the you know them working in the word babushka, which you know that's one of like five Russian words that that we actually do know, you know, and they do also you know nostrovia uh, or something like that, you know, is their version of like cheers. Um, and in the other episode, he said dos vidanya, uh, which I want to say something like hello. And, yeah, and, and during it, you know, uh, Stuart, dur during the song performance, the, the Stuart has lined up these bottles, and he's, like, blowing over the, the tops of them, which, you know, that is a, a thing. There are some people who make instruments like that. And this is a callback. that the, He did the same joke on the live show, Vesnakaduam, um, which I guess would translate into something, what are you talking about, or something like that. Which is, at first it was the name of the, the radio show, then there was a song with that exact title on the radio show, and then he did a live show that also got that title, you know, because that was what people knew him from, and it was, you know, some of the same types of jokes as the radio show. And that was also the first place that he played multiple characters himself. You know, he plays himself, obviously. He plays this teenager who's doing a warm-up act for him. Stuart and uh, Rhodey, I guess it's... Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, and, and yeah. Um, so, you know, Igor collapses... And the, the yeah, Stuart is like, what could possibly cost two million? And you know, opens the crate, and yeah, it's like a, a rocket kind of you know some kind of munitions thing, you know. And yeah, the you know we get the the speaker as as Stuart, you know, is very very um like uh, what's the word like clearly like scared of of you know this is he's he's not okay with this and it's also this thing of like uh, what's the word um i guess this might be the first episode that ends where the with the like um hook for the next episode or cliffhanger is like this thing of you know okay this is actually dangerous you know the the other ones it wasn't quite like it there wasn't necessarily like physical danger um though you know him getting them getting evicted would obviously be be bad but he he'd be able to find some place that yeah um and and yeah the speaker goes over the different things and brings up you know did people really die of boredom before TVs and the moment he says it's sort of like don't you touch my TV you know? And the speaker gets annoyed, and it's like, did you really not see that one coming, speaker? Did you, does that, 
did that completely catch you off guard? Was that was that in just you know who, who could possibly have seen coming that he would freak out at the at the suggestion? You know that was the thing that that was what was needed to snap him out of it. You know he's sorry about that. He's standing there. You know it's the keyboard. Um, he's he's standing there like oh, rocket. You know and then you know TV TV don't you don't touch my TV. And, yeah, um, the, let's see, I should be able to do an episode tomorrow, so until then, I'm going to go turn on my TV, because I do feel a boredom-related death creeping up on me.